Uh, welcome you to the next class on the inorganic chemistry of uh, life principles and perspectives. Last two classes I have tried to cover some highlights of all the topics that I have discussed and looks like I uh, will have one more class maybe another class too to cover. Uh, initially I have covered all the highlights of the introductory aspects then I have covered the introductory aspects uh, of uh, the highlights of the alkali alkaline earth and then vanadium then manganese. So, let us start with uh, iron in the uh, bioinorganic chemistry or the biological inorganic chemistry the highlights. The highlights in case of the iron are something arising from two categories of enzymes called heme based and those which are not having heme and all of these are involved in uh, oxidative reactions, reductive reactions. So, therefore, oxido reductase reactions they are also involved in transport reactions of oxygen electron and iron. So, therefore, so the, we have a huge a plethora huge uh, uh, list of enzymes present under, under the iron um, uh, category and that is where you see if you look at the amount of the element uh, uh, iron present in the body is almost uh, much higher than any other trace element which is about 3 to 4 to 5 um, grams per a body weight of 70 kilograms of body this. So, that means a huge number of iron enzymes are being uh, uh, being involved and uh, since it is a highlight I just uh, tell you give some other things. I explained a lot of uh, features uh, dependent on the transport, transport of the oxygen. I have tried to compare transport of the oxygen uh, with respect to that of the storage of the oxygen by myoglobin uh, and then I compared the hemoglobin with the hemerythrin and the hemocyanin which is in invertebrates and which is in molluscus. So, therefore, you have the hemoglobin you have the porphyrin and these are two non porphyrin with the two uh, uh, iron ions and two copper ions. So, the kind of uh, oxo species is iron OO which is not so much perturbed with the oxygen oxygen bond in case of hemoglobin. And in case of uh, hemerythrin, it is more or less like a HO2 kind of species, uh, so hydroperoxy kind of a species. And when you go to the hemocyanin, it is a basically a peroxo species. In fact, these can be very well established by variety of spectroscopy, including vibrational spectroscopy too. Okay, aspect of interest in this is that uh, you see that the oxygen oxygen nature is uh, differing from one to the other to the other. So, when it comes to this it is a weight O to 2 minus. So, when it has to act as a O to transport obviously it has to release not O to 2 minus it has to release at the end O 2. So, therefore, there has to be re uh, oxidation of this and which is taken care in those enzymes. Whereas, in the enzyme of human uh, this is very slightly perturbed and based on the uh, conformational changes it can get back to the simple O2 and the O2 is liberated. So, therefore, the protein conformation itself will take care of ensures that the O2 is released not the O2 minus or O2 minus dot kind of thing. Okay, also, I have uh, explained about the iron transport by transferrin. Transferrin has got two sides C terminal side and terminal side both the sides iron is bound. Important point is in these cases the ion is bound only when carbonate ion is present and we know that it is allotosteric factor because in order to form the uh, metal core you require the, uh, the carbonate factor that we have seen. And these two N terminal and C terminal uh, differ by very small uh, change in their strength uh, and, uh, and this is indeed reflected when these are released too. Okay, so, the receptor sites of the cell membrane will uh, will receive the transferrin which is bound with the iron ions and will basically make a vesicle and engulf inside. So, once it is engulfed inside as the pH changes the, uh, the iron ions are released initially the nitri uh, the N terminal ion is released at a slightly higher pH uh, such as 4.5 and at 3.8 the lower at a lower pH which is around 3.8 C terminal is released and this is how the iron transport in fact takes place. Followed by this I have talked to you about the iron storage by ferritin, ferritin is a huge protein having 24 subunits 4500 iron ions about 7 to 8 nanometers diameter and there are two major features one is threefold axis of channels and fourfold axis of channels these are the lifelines of the ferritin. 
So, these will carry ions from out to in or from in to out it could be ions it could be reducing equivalents etcetera all of these things are uh, being. In fact, the way if you see the lining inside as the ion 2 plus enters in ion 2 plus uh, binds to the carboxylic terminals interior then oxidized by the oxygen and then further bridges by the phosphate. So, you get basically some kind of a iron oxo phosphate kind of a bridged uh, kind of a species which will grow from one to the other. And uh, when you release this by using the reducing equivalents again iron 3 plus is reduced to iron 2 plus and then the iron 2 plus come out. I am sure you know why iron it has to be converted to iron 2 plus because iron 2 plus is highly mobile as compared to or uh, labile let us use the word labile as compared to the other iron 3 plus. So, that is where the things are happening and uh, entire thing is very orderly fashion it happens both the formation of the, uh, of the iron cluster uh, formation inside as well as the release of this uh, forms very highly. So, therefore, you have uh, entry and exit of the iron from the. Uh, so, it enters as iron 2 stays as iron 3, but releases as iron 2 again and this is what you need to remember. Followed by the all this transport phenomena I have come to the stage of the electron transfer to be introduced I have introduced electron transfer of course, electron transfer dependent depends upon the potential difference between the donor and acceptor in terms of delta G 0. So, as long as the delta G 0 is negative then this is feasible kind of a reaction. What else does it depend on? It does depend upon the distance between the donor acceptor, it does depend upon the conductivity of the medium between the donor and acceptor uh, ok. And it also depends upon the reorganizational energy. What is the reorganizational energy? Uh, that is you have you see that you when the donor acceptor come close by you get a donor acceptor complex, but that donor acceptor complex may not be uh, in a good posture to transfer the electron. So, it has to change its posture and this posture change is by the conformational change or reorganization. So, this particular energy difference is referred as the reorganizational energy. So, the smaller this value the greater the rate of the reaction uh, is there. So, these are the factors that are uh, thing and the cytochromes are involved and when the cytochromes both the fifth and sixth coordinations are, are uh, blocked by histidine, histidine or histidine methionine then these are not suited for oxygen activation these are suited for only electron transfer. So, what kind of an electron transfer? Electron transfer from iron 3 to iron 2. So, in effect any cytochrome c can only transfer one electron not more than that. If somewhere 3 or 4 electrons are required that means 4 times it has to work 3 times it has to work etcetera, etcetera. And then after having looked at the heme based uh, uh, electron transfer proteins I have taken you into the iron sulfur proteins uh, 1 iron 4 cysteine which is called rubridoxin, 2 iron 2 sulfites which is called feridoxin, 4 iron 4 sulfide called again feridoxins. And these sulfides can be easily understood by adding mineral acid which will give H 2 S and your nose can smell that good enough. And there are uh, systems where protein have got 1 4 f 4 s or more than 1 4 f 4 s in the same or a combination of these kind of things etcetera and these differ in their redox potentials of that. And in some of the cases these ion sulfur proteins clusters are buried inside and stabilized by hydrogen bonds there the uh, redox potentials are more positive such things are known as the high potential iron sulfur proteins. And as you can see overall from here whether you have a 1 iron, whether you have a 2 iron, whether you have a 3 or 4 irons you always have only one facile electron transfer. In 1 iron obviously, uh, there is one the same reduced and oxidized when you have 2 iron uh, the, there are 3 possibilities, but not all 3 possibilities are found in enzymes only these 2 possibilities are found. So, 1 iron 2, 1 iron 3 both iron 3 not with the both iron 2 because a highly reduced enzyme can or could be uh, you know dangerous to the system. Similarly, when you have 4 ions there are many combinations are there of which uh, the combination that are possible are between uh, this uh, and uh, this uh, ok if he reduced if he oxidized and if the uh, protein is already in the Fe oxidized then it can be superoxidized. This is in the normal feridoxins and if you have a high potential iron sulfur protein feridoxin 
it can only go from uh, 3 iron 2, 1 iron 3 to 2 iron 2 and 2 iron 3. Never it goes to this at all, never it goes to this at all. Okay. So, therefore, several of the oxidation states of these are prevent are, are not accessed by the system because the system uh, will uh, get a too reactive kind of a species and uh, unwanted things can happen. So, that is where the thing is. In fact, what happens in that you, you, if you see that uh, as you go from this cluster to this cluster to this cluster, uh, you have 1 minus, you have 2 minus, you have 3 minus. So, your uh, uh, the, the number of uh, uh, reduced uh, in this, this is the 3 iron 3 is 2 iron 3 and 1 iron 3 and that is how it is. As you reduce that means you add electron, this particular bond you see that is increasing, this particular bond um, is also increasing okay? and so therefore, the, the core is expanding. And if you go in the reverse direction, the core is uh, reducing. So, the core expands and the core reduce, uh, reduces expansion and contraction, not reduce, contraction. So, expansion and contraction in this will take the electron transfer to a, a kind of a uh, useful uh, thing. So, during the electron transfer, the core of the iron, uh, iron sulfur cluster expands and contracts and that uh, reflects in the conformational state of the whole protein that is being uh, surrounded that. Having explained the electron transfer then I have smoothly uh, taken a transition into this uh, the oxygenase enzymes. Uh, we have uh, the monooxygenases, dioxygenases, both oxygenases based on the heme, non uh, not based on the heme all of these are, uh, uh, are there in the iron. And I try to look at uh, uh, explain you at one example at least of each of these things. And example here given is cytochrome P450 and nomenclature etc. I am not spending time here as you know this is from the absorption wavelength etc. Okay, uh, some important features in this monooxygenase. Monooxygenase means only one O atom of the O2 is added to the substrate. The other O atom of the O2 goes as water. In case of dioxygenase, both the O's of the O2 are used for the substrate oxidation and that is what the uh, thing is. So, the iron uh, enzyme in the iron 3 form is this uh, is the resting state when the substrate uh, enters into the close proximity of the uh, of the ion center there is a conformational change and this triggers the electron transfer that means enzyme is activated. So, that means after the, uh, the, the, the uh, substrate comes in only the electron transfer takes place because after the electron transfer takes place uh, the electron that is being uh, the added to the ion 3 becoming ion 2 is very active species therefore, that will is ready to give away the electron therefore, O 2 has to be ready in that. So, then O 2 1 electron then second electron etcetera and then goes through the via ferrile oxo and then, then it will add an uh, hydroxylation to the substrate and the water uh, you go. So, this is uh, interesting. Suppose uh, one were to say that here the question is if the substrate does not come into peak, uh, come uh, close to the enzyme and if enzyme receives electron is there any danger? There is a great danger because if the substrate is not the electron comes in the, in the contact if the oxygen is present there then oxygen will get activated and you will get oxo radicals. Therefore, those uh, superoxide radicals are dangerous to the system the system can get uh, hydroxylated, it can be the same protein can get. So, therefore, the nature has, has chosen the mechanism in such a way that the first the entry uh, the substrate and then followed by these things. Let us look at uh, an example for the uh, another example, this example cytochrome P450 is used for camphor and many other things, but one specific one which is uh, converts the methan methane to methanol is called the methane monooxygenase. And methane monooxygenase is unlike the cytochrome P450 is not a heme kind of a protein, it is a non-heme uh, enzyme. As you can see in its resting state, in its resting state it is in the di-iron uh, center and this di-iron center is obviously activated in presence of the uh, of course, substrate which is not sh uh, shown here, but uh, uh, I, I tell you which is there in the schemes that I have given you and then uh, takes up 2 electrons and the 2 ions 2 3s will go to 2 ion 2 and now it is uh, very well poised for O2 to be oxidized 
O2 to be reduced. So, the O2 can bridge between the two ion 3s and then receive two electrons. So therefore, you get uh, some kind of a peroxo kind of a species and this will convert to the ferrule kind of a Fe4 kind of a species with the uh, oxygen bridging. So, you are going from ion 3 to ion 2, ion 2 to ion 3 again ion 4. So, 2 to 3 to 4 and then this will take your methane to methanol and uh, the one of the other oxygen goes as the water and that can uh, circulate. So, some similarities you can find between both of them, but uh, in case of methane monoxygenase it is not one iron it is the two iron centers. Okay, uh, also explain an example for the uh, dioxygenase, uh, an example I have taken was a protocatechuate 3, 4 dioxygenase. And this is again a non heme enzyme, this is again uh, a mono iron center enzyme. And this enzyme has got a 5 coordination with some uh, uh, kind of a tyrosines and histidine bound and uh, wherein one of the uh, coordination can be sort of expanded for the binding of the catechol uh, into this. And the, uh, the property of the catechols is that you have a phenolic moiety, they can undergo uh, e, uh, phenol keto or enol keto kind of a tetomerism which will go through um, the radical neutral kind of a species, ionic species. So, so binding through uh, mono then becomes dentate and now uh, this can be activated by this particular electron and then electron is introduced into the O2 at this stage, the O2 is introduced between the and, and this substrate and then substrate finally gets uh, gets cleaved by taking both the oxygens into it. Okay? So, in all these the redox uh, chemistry occurs by NADH then FAD then uh, 2 ion 2 sulfur another 2 ion 2 sulfur and the active center too. So, we have looked at uh, various there are, there are other dioxygenase enzyme I have not shown in the highlights so, uh, was the tryptophan. Uh, oxidase kind of a one. Mm, so, therefore, uh, in that case it is a heme based enzyme and that also I have given in the class. It's so far we have looked at the oxygenase then I think we need to look at some of the reduction chemistry. So, ribonucleotide reductase uh, has got a dinuclear iron center. The role of this is stabilizing a radical from the tyrosine which is very close by within 5 angstroms from this one. And it is this which is involved in the activity, this will generate a radical at the cystinyl center which is in a neighbor subunit and this radical is transformed uh, to this particular uh, center and from this center it is transformed to this center and then you have a D oxygenation and then goes on this. So, the role in this particular enzyme is not a direct catalytic, it is an indirect but it stabilizes the tyrosine radical and rest of the things goes like uh, the consequential uh, steps as shown over there. Okay. So, radical, radical formation etcetera and uh, this radical is transferred to this particular position and this is again racemized to that and then oxidation etcetera and then this will lose the oxygen and then uh, hydrogen comes into the reduction. So, you have uh, the dithiol and going into the uh, disulfide and then again back to the dithiol. So, this is one thing and this is the radical and radical is transformed. So, this whole thing uh, happens in one subunit of the protein, this whole thing happens in the sub another subunit. This is a binding subunit plus the radical which is being transferred subunit. So, this can recognize the different nucleotides coming into the, um, into the uh, protein. So, therefore, you can identify the uh, deoxyribonucleic uh, acids that are coming into the system too. Okay, uh, some additional highlights on the ion enzymes uh, start taking uh, their shape from uh, let us say other kinds of uh, um, reductases. See here example uh, cytochrome C nitrite sulphide reductase. So, sulphide uh, uh, SO3 minus to HS minus this is a 6 electron 7 proton reaction, nitrite to ammonia this is a 6 electron plus 7 protons this is uh, ammonia and 2 H2O and this kind of things you know you require a lot of number of electrons therefore simple heme 
are not sufficient enough. Therefore, these hemes are connected with the iron sulfur cluster and such a situation is called siroheme. So, siroheme's are important essential for doing such a huge level of uh, the huge level of uh, uh, the reduction you see 6 electron, 6 electron and this is a proton. So, how do you find out electron proton combination in a redox process is just by looking at the redox potential as a function of pH. These are called poor box plots from this uh, the slope you can identify the number of electrons versus the number of proton ratio as well. It is a very powerful which I explained in the beginning. So, this, uh, we have cases where the iron sulfur clusters are there, the, we have cases where the, um, the, uh, the iron hemes are there, we have a case where both of these are present simultaneously together in the nitride sulphide oxidase too. Another bit more uh, the, the complicated one which I talked to you was in the previous slide was the nitrite reductase and this is NO2 minus 6 electron 7 protons give NH3 and 3 H2. Okay, uh, so, the resting enzyme in ion 3 with water and in presence of the electron first electron it gets activated. Once it is activated with the first electron, it is ready for binding to the nitro group and this nitro group will displace the water that is present at the iron center. Now, uh, it is ready on the platform, now it has come into the into the basically a cupboardy coat. So, it is basically like a uh, 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 this is the coat is getting ready, the player is entering here and then ready with the, uh, the playing for the cupboardy kind of a. Uh, play and then it goes with uh, the the um, the proton electron proton electron kind of a sequences here an uh, NO2 binding reduction another reduction and then uh, makes this one into the uh, gen O okay and then uh, H2 NOH like somewhat like uh, hydroxyl amine species and then where uh, you lose your water and then the ammonia etc. So, that is how it is uh, basically you have to lose the ammonia and water, one water is going in the first step and uh, the second water goes at this particular thing. So, that is where uh, you have this is the O2 water and then you have these steps where uh, the electrons. So, you have totally uh, the 6 electrons and 7 proton kind of a situation that you have. So, therefore, in the active side is plus 2 and resting state is plus 3 for the iron in all these cases. So, essentially what we have looked at in the iron enzymes huge number, we have looked at the transport of oxygen and storage of oxygen, transport of iron, storage of iron, all of these transport of electron, transport of electron by cytochromes, transport of electron by iron sulfur proteins, how the uh, iron sulfur clusters expand and contract during the electron transfer the iron uh, 4 ion 4 sulfur clusters, pyridoxin clusters. Okay. So, oxygenase then I took uh, uh, the cases of oxygenase, mono oxygenase uh, and dioxygenase, mono oxygenase both uh, the heme and the non heme is methane to methanol, dioxygenase uh, um, is, is that where the protocatechuate uh, uh, case and I have not uh, in the highlights explained, but I explained in the regular class the tire, uh, the tryptophan oxidase uh, uh, all those things. So, absolutely which is a heme based one too. Then I took over a lot of uh, the iron uh, di iron enzymes, explained the reductases, uh, uh, ribonucleic reductase very well. Then I have also explained the nitrite sulfate reductases all these where multiple electrons are required where cyrohem is involved and then uh, I have also explained in the regular class rubirithrin and I have also talked to you about the hydrolase kind of thing which is purple acid phosphatase and this which in the highlights I have not covered, but I have covered uh, in that kind of a uh, situation. Okay. So, iron is a huge story of all these kind of things. So, we have a very nice uh, highlights of this and make, uh, please be advised in the uh, in the highlights I may not be covering all the enzymes. So, I am just trying to take some features to bring uh, to your notice. So, following this uh, huge uh, uh, you know play with the iron for over 
seven, eight, nine classes or so, then I entered into the into the uh, cobalamine story where the uh, where the cobalt ion is involved. Cobalt ion is involved in the entire bioinorganic chemistry in only one aspect that is in vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is a coenzyme, it is not an enzyme. But this coenzyme is associated with a huge number of enzymes uh, in uh, bringing one two hydride shift kind of a reactions. So, this is a this is a adenosyl cobalamine is the natural one and as you can see here this is the um, the corine part and this is the uh, benzimidazole part which is bound and this is the group which is the one which uh, will play a role and therefore, this bond CO to R bond can break uh, homolytically with a dot dot cobalt 2 and R dot can uh, um, break uh, oh, homo heterolytically cobalt 3 R minus a uh, cobalt 1 R plus and both of these are possible all these three. These uh, three situations are possible based on the, the binding strength and the protein that is there how it is influencing the strength of these ones and this all we have studied in the class. Uh, we have uh, explained how uh, the 1 2 hydride shift will lead to the product formation. In some cases, uh, there is uh, the water elimination and other kinds of reactions happening uh, in that too. So, adenosyl cobalamin is also involved uh, in uh, reductase activity like ribonucleotide reductase activity, which is very similar analogous to that found with the, uh, with the iron enzyme. So, uh, with the iron uh, reductase. So, therefore, I have not taken too much uh, of uh, uh, importance to introduce that uh, in this uh, highlights uh, at all. Okay. And uh, uh, so, following this, I have talked to you uh, on nickel enzymes. So, I must have spent about uh, 3 4 classes on this. Uh, we have uh, hydrolase kind of enzymes like urease, um, hydrogenase reaction, dehydrogenase reactions. Uh, methyl coenzyme and reductase, uh, superoxide dismutase, glyoxylase, cis trans isomerase and acetyl coenzyme A synthase. So, so many different kinds of enzymes have been covered under the under the nickel and nickel is also a very important enzyme. Urease it uh, hydrolyzes urea to ammonia and H 2 CO 3, hydrogenase is the proton to hydrogen. Uh, using the electrons and it is a reversible kind of an enzyme uh, uh, and CO dehydrogenase is uh, carbon monoxide dehydrogenase going to the carbon dioxide um, kind of thing. Methyl uh, uh, coenzyme M reductase would uh, uh, reduce the coenzyme methyl group to uh, uh, methane moiety and that methane is further used by the methanogenic uh, bacteria methane used using bacteria or even uh, even uh, methanogenic uh, one where the methane is converted to the methanol methane monooxygenase etc etc so nickel also involved in superoxide dismutase and uh, you know very well superoxide dismutase uh, in the first step o2 minus dot uh, will lose the electron and go to O2. In the second step, the it will take another electron and go to O2 to minus. So, there will effect you will get 1 H2 O2 1 O2 and H2 O2 is taken care by the catalase afterwards. So, there is a glyoxylase enzyme, cisterns, isomerase and acetyl coenzyme uh, synthase of it. Kind of a course you see that a dinuclear nickel with a bridge the carboxylate hydroxy this is used in the urease and this is nickel in uh, centers factor F430 which is involved in hydrogenase kind of uh, uh, enzymes etc. And again uh, these things are there nickel iron centers and uh, these are in the hydrogenase carbon monoxide dehydrogenase which is having different kinds of uh, centers as you can see and these are involved in the reactivity and this is the superoxide dismutase. So, uh, if you look at the nickel hydrogenase enzyme, there is a activation cycle, there is a catalysis cycle. So, activation cycle, catalysis cycle, if you follow it is very interesting, it is very simple and easy that you can understand. I have already explained to you in SOD, nickel 3 plus, uh, then O2 minus, 
So O2 minus will bind and take out uh, this one go as O2 gets O2 minus get oxidized and Na2 plus 3 plus gets reduced to Na2 plus. This will take another uh, mole of O2 minus uh, and that will uh, uh, reduce further so therefore the nickel gets oxidized and then goes as H2O2. So as I have mentioned uh, all this. So, one of the important uh, enzymes which is a very complicated kind of an enzyme is that the carbon monoxide dehydrogenase uh, where you can see it starts from this cluster and the electron flows go through this and then finally CO and CO2 and this is shown for the reverse kind of a system. So, huge clusters of iron sulfur clusters are there in this. So, uh, I have a few more highlights to cover then I will start with the, um, with the tutorials in the next class I will complete the remaining highlights and then uh, get to the tutorial. Thank you very much.